Well, hey, Becoming Me, I am so excited to introduce you to my warrior friend, Anne. Anne, welcome to Becoming Me. All right. Thank you, Emily. I'm excited to be on your uh, podcast today. Thank you. I am so excited. The honor is mine. And, you know, I had the privilege of hearing you share your story at an exceptional morning's breakfast in Ocala several months ago. And I knew that your story, how you're becoming who God made you to be, would be such an encouragement to the Becoming Me.tv community. So thank you for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you. You know, if someone wasn't familiar with who Anne is, let's just start with an overview. Like, who is Anne? Who is Anne? Well, you know, Emily, most people know me as Auntie Anne, the founder of Auntie Anne Soft Pretzels. But you know what? Who I am uh, is really a Jesus loving person. Uh, I live my life wanting to please him more than any one. Uh, I live my life wanting to be uh, an encouragement to uh, everyone that I meet, uh, whether I go to the grocery store or whether I'm speaking to uh, an audience. I want my life to um, uh, to follow the the Jesus the Jesus life. Well, that sounds maybe that sounds a little bit like pie in the sky kind of stuff. Like like how in the world do you do that? Mm-hmm. But um, ever since I was a little girl, I, all I really wanted to do was to please God, uh, walk in his purpose for me and uh, be a good wife and a good mom and a good grandma. That's my goal. (laughs) I love that. And I love how you even answered that question too, because we always tend to go after who am I as what you do. And Uh, I mean, that's a part of who we are, but you just described who Anne is. And I love that. Um, you know, you, I've had the privilege of hearing your story and I would love for you to just take some time right now and unpack, like, how have you become who you are today? Like, what is your story? What's your journey? Well, you do know that is a loaded question. Oh, yes. So (laughs) I'll do my best to, um, uh, to tell you all about that in the next few minutes. But, you know, uh, growing up in an Amish culture, my mom and dad, uh, old order Amish, uh, meaning a horse and buggy, no electricity kind of Amish people until I turned three. My dad, my dad wanted to farm with a tractor rather than horses. And so we ended up going to the Amish Mennonite or Black Car Amish Church, which meant We were moving on up in the world, and that was that we could have a a car, had to be black, but we could have electricity, and uh, so my dad could farm with tractors. So we were, um, you know, for the most part, the outside world would never know that we were not Amish. We looked very Amish and acted uh, very Amish. We were in that culture. So in that world, uh, which is so different than my children or my grandchildren's world, there's nothing there's hardly anything similar to to my growing up years compared to my children and grandchildren, which um, in the 21st century, it's really hard to do some of the simple things that we did, meaning, you know, go to church every Sunday. My mom and dad, we there was eight of us kids, uh, 10 in our family, and there was not a day went by that we didn't have breakfast, lunch, and dinner together around the table. Like there were no exceptions. I was never too sick or I could never say, oh, I don't feel like it or I want to watch TV or the the discipline of that life, Emily, is what made me who I am. I'm I'm saying that to say uh, if it was not for the discipline that mom and dad taught us, all of us as kids, I would never have survived in the the corporate world of Auntie Anne that I found myself in at the age of 40. But I knew by then, I for sure I knew one thing. Uh, I am a doer. It was all about doing tasks. It was all about um, if mom and dad asked us to do anything, there was no, there was never a no, I don't feel like it. There was never, I could almost cry thinking about it. I never said no, I can't. Or mm-hmm. I never whined, even though I wanted to. Because the tasks on the farm um, are not like taking out the trash or setting the table for your family, They're, even though it's part of it, but that, that the, the tasks are like going out in the field and uh, planting tobacco. The tasks are going out in the barn and milking the cows. The task is going out to the barn and um, carrying two buckets of milk and pouring it into the, the containers. So, you know, when I talk about tasks 
anyone that's been a farmer would could totally relate to what I'm saying. So I grew up doing tasks. And even that, I carry that, Emily, into my spiritual life as well. It was kind of, it was all about doing mm. for God. It was about doing his will. It was about, um, you know, doing what God asked me to do, which is part of mm -hmm. the walk with Christ. But it's not... <laughs> I don't, I don't know which is most important, the doing or the being. Mm. Yeah. So what, I, what I've learned through, through the years, Emily, is, and, and honestly, when I learned the being part of who I am, it, that really began to happen when I became Auntie N. Because at one point, I was no longer able <laughs> to do all the tasks. And then... And now what? What do I do? But God was very clear with me. He, one day I'm walking through my office and I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to, do you want me to, to be an evangelist for you? Do you want me to preach the gospel in this corporate America setting that I found myself in like almost overnight? And he stopped me in my busy tracks. And he said, I want you to be salt and light. Mm. Wow. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> and that, excuse me, that really, that was the defining moment for me when I realized, I don't know what being means right now at that moment, but I knew that his, 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 the point was, I'm not asking you to do as much as I want you to be. Wow. And that's, that's sobering. And that's a whole mind shift, shifting of my mind that I never once thought about before then. It meant to me at that time, I needed to learn how to be. Light doesn't say a word, it only shines. And salt doesn't say anything but it makes things tasty. So as a believer in that moment, I realized I have some work to do. Guess what? I would have to figure out <laughs> what does this mean? What does it mean? What does it mean to be? Wow. I mean, what an incredible question to find yourself with as well. And I love even how being salt and being light, sometimes even as a Christ follower, it is very easy to think that entails doing something. But what you just shared with us, that truth, that light doesn't say anything. It just shines and salt isn't saying anything either. It's just adding that flavor, that God flavor to the world. Um, you know, if you were, well, let me ask you first, are you a coffee drinker? I am a coffee drinker. Yeah? I'm not, I'm, I'm not a six cups a day kind of coffee drinker. I'm like one or two, but it has to be really, really good. Ooh. I agree. Good coffee. You just can't, you can't miss that. So if you were having a really good cup of coffee with someone else and you were just trying to encourage them on their own becoming journey, what would you say to just challenge them to be who God made them to be? Hmm. Hmm. I would just say to them, uh, wow, that's a thought provoking question for sure, Emily. Um, I would um, I would encourage them to stop, to stop for a while. I don't know how long or what stopping may look like for some people, but stop and reevaluate. You know, I think that doing in my journey, uh, doing is is kind of like it's never enough. Mm -hmm. Right, like it's never enough. So I would encourage someone to um, understand that although doing is is a part of our walk with Christ, and being is is a part of our walk with Christ. But I love the one verse in the Bible that says, "Faith without works is dead." So you cannot 
just simply proclaim faith and not do anything. Mm -hmm. But maybe um, encourage people to understand there are two there 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 are two parts to our walk with Christ, and I I know that I had the doing part of I think that I was kind of lopsided I was all about doing because if I do it good enough, and if I do it maybe better than you or maybe better than the next person then God will be very very pleased with me. Um. So it's kind of like when you learn how to become, to be, to be, to become, um, instead of um, being a, a constant a doer and trying to compare yourself with other people's doings, the, the being is, for me, it became the journey of, of, there's, it's not about comparing who I am with you or anyone else. It was about my own journey, my, my own soul searching, like, Lord, uh, how, how do you want me to be? Mm. Who do you want me to be in the world, in the world in which you put me? I am in a corporate America. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and now I'm a business woman. Who do you want me to be? And how do you want me to act? Mm -hmm. So it became, I, um, I began to do to do some very very deep soul searching, and what I discovered is that it's much easier to do than it is to be. Yeah. So being is 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 being in tune with God's presence. Because if you remember in, in the garden, Satan's whole tactic was to separate Adam and Eve from God's presence. Mm, yeah. He didn't care about them not working the garden, like tilling the garden and doing the task of, you know, gardening. Mm -hmm. But what he was after was Satan wanted to separate them from God's presence. Yeah. And I believe that for me, Emily, I'm saying I'm not a preacher or a Bible student or, but my experience has been that Satan's always trying to disconnect us from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So my journey of becoming was really a journey of Connecting, connecting with him. And when you connect with him, then it's really true that the Bible says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So I guess I would encourage if I was sitting down with someone over a cup of coffee know the difference between being and doing for God or for others and doing, doing. You, you'll, you'll discover that in time, what the difference is. Yeah. But at the end of the day, for me, it was an intimate relationship with god with my creator with jesus my savior and with holy spirit within that gave me the, the power and the uh, the the power and the ability to overcome mm -hmm. any obstacle that was put in my path and when I talk about any obstacle, <laughs> you've heard my story a little bit of it, mm -hmm. but my obstacles are in my book. <laughs> so uh, the book Overcome and Lead or The Secret Lies Within, I talk about overcoming the obstacles in my life. So I would encourage you just to take time, first of all, to be with God. 
I love, oh my goodness. I just have like goosebumps. This is so powerful and it's so true. Um, you know, I love that you shared your book. If somebody was watching your story right now and, or they're listening and they wanted to learn more about these obstacles that you've overcome in your journey, all the different chapters of what it has meant to become. And, um, where could somebody find your book? How can they connect with you online and just continue to learn from you? Yeah, they can go onto my website, antianbyler.com, and they can order the book online in my store, or they can always get it on amazon.com. If you order it from me, then I, I can send you a, an autographed copy if, if that's what you would like. Again, on antianbyler, that's A U N T I E, Antian, A N N E, Byler, B as in boy, E Edward, I L E R.com. And you mm-hmm. can order it on, on online on, in our store. Yes. I love that. So good. I cannot wait to read your book. We'll have the links, everybody in the show notes too. So you can easily just go buy the book. Um, make sure that you do, you can read all of Anne's story and follow her on Instagram. Like I love following you on Instagram, all of your inspirational quotes and the stories that you're sharing. Um, but today, truly, this has been a special moment, a special time. Um, thanks for challenging us and, and reminding us to know whose we are. Um, we really can't be if we don't know who he's made us to be. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am.